Hello, Kelly. Um, right now it's uh, what is it? It's 9:51 on, uh, on on Wednesday night. I'm going to give you. Uh, I just finished reading uh, the chapter 10. That's the K-12 music education at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown on what I read. Okay, they talk about in this one about how um, rock and roll is becoming uh, quite a, uh, a a mainstay in uh, in some programs, and they gave two reasons why. <clears throat> First, they said that uh, rock and roll education is becoming mainstream in a lot of schools, and uh, a lot of ensembles and curriculum are being uh, geared towards including uh, rock and roll and popular music in general into uh, into uh, their programs. And the second thing it, it said that rock and roll is uh, very becoming more global, it's becoming more world music, where a lot of artists are incorporating uh, world music and music from other cultures into general mainstream rock and roll. They make a really good point in this book at the beginning, which is something that we all know, uh, about how rock is really shunned in a lot of circles because of it has a bad rap. And they talk about sex, drugs, and rock and roll as being the, uh, uh, you know, the stereotypical, um, you know, view of what rock and roll is. So they talk about that as being a negative and why rock and roll has been not used so much over the years. They talk in this one too about how <clears throat> how uh, rock and is learned, how rock music is learned over the years, and of course it's a very oral tradition in rock and roll, where uh, people listen to radio or listen to uh, records and tapes over the years, replaying the parts over and over to get the uh, to get the licks, as they're saying, to learn the parts. But today we're seeing more formalized notation, more formalized uh, uh, ways of of learning it and teaching it. And uh, they talk a little bit about that in this book, too, in this story too. Okay, something really interesting here that's always been a bit of a rock for me. Uh, but uh, it says here <clears throat> the following reasons. Oh, this is on page 178, by the way. It says the following reasons are for resisting use of rock music has dominated has have dominated for years. Okay, so number one, students are exposed to rock music outside of school, so why teach it in school? Number two, stereotypical message of sex, drugs, and rock and roll is inappropriate. Number three. There is presumed lack of intrinsic musical value in rock and roll. Number four, there is insufficient time in the curriculum for the addition of repertoire and skill development. Number five, there are limited resources and teacher training courses. Absolutely. I agree with that one, 100%. And the last one, I think that's number six, uh, there's insufficient curriculum guidelines. And that's true too. Probably because the people who develop the curriculum have no idea what rock and roll is fit to eat. Okay, so what this uh, what this whole uh, paper is about is about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that's in Cleveland, um, and uh, it, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum in Cleveland, and it talks about what the program is that they have, what the Rock and Roll program is that they have in Cleveland in, in this Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, what program they have for teaching music, and they go through several of the um, of the programs that they have um, in uh, in this Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So they just outline some. I'm not going to go through them, but they they go. They, they have several ones. Like they have a graduate teacher training course, and they have online lesson plans, like hundreds of them supposedly. Um, they have resource guides for teachers, and they they conduct distance learning as well. So uh, anyway, they have um, the Rock School also has. Or I'm saying Rock School, um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They also have uh, several uh, examples of, of curriculum pieces that they have here. Like, for example, they have one called Kids Can Rock for, for grades eight, uh, uh, K to 8. And they talk about Bo Diddley and things like that. And, and, and they have the students, they give the students these shaker things that they can smack on and play and shake. And Then you have another program called 50 Years of Rock and Roll, Sock Hops to Hip Hop, which is, has a lot of dance. And they learn all the various dances throughout the years. And that's for ages K to 12. It goes on, they list a whole bunch of these that they have. These curriculum pieces actually look pretty good. I, I'd like to see more detail, of course, but they actually look like they're pretty good. Um, the, the, uh, I'll talk about more what I don't like later, but they do look pretty good. Now, they talk a lot in this section about how music is, uh, rock music these days is very multicultural or <clears throat> is a world music. 
and they talk about how they take each uh, geographical part of the world and they talk about what uh, that part of the world has contributed to rock and roll. Like they say, Africa. And they say in Africa, and under the subheading of rhythm, they say, based on speech. Um, they say melody in Africa. Commonly used pentatonic scale. Intervals are not based on European scales. So they go down through several of the, um, like the elements of music, or the dimensions of music, whatever term you want to use. But anyway, they go down through all the elements, and they, um, they talk about like, you know, what they contributed. Not only elements, too, but they also talk about dance and things like that, too, and purpose and stuff. And then they take Europe... And then they take Asia and the Americas, like Latin America, and they talk about that. And they give examples of artists from each region, too. My thought on this is it's, it's an interesting package. Um, it's a, uh, it seems very specialized, where they, um, they have specific material that they've developed uh, about rock and roll. And, um, and, and uh, like it... It, it seems very, um, it's very content driven. It doesn't seem to have much in the way of, uh, doesn't seem to have much in the way of a process thought to it. It's more of a product. You know, like they have lesson plans there, material there for, like, to learn about Elvis and learn about Bo Diddley and stuff like that. And that's all good content. It doesn't talk anything in here about the process, like what kind of process they use, what kind of theories they are behind the material and why they developed certain materials here. So it seems very, mm, very commercial, very packaged. But anyway, I'm not really, I don't know, it's, I like to have my hands on material. But I think this material could be really good if used in the context of a, a really good, um, uh, like a, 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 a process that somebody may have of teaching um, popular music in the classroom. So, I thought it was a pretty good article. It makes some good points. Not really worth talking about. So, the end. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Actually, don't bother reading it. I read that one, so if you want to read the other one, perfect. See ya.